when we get to post-production, uh, my composer, Jonathan Elias, uh, who had just done Children of the Corn, we, we had decided that we would pretty much like to do all of our movies together. Our relationship was that smooth and easy, and he was that talented, and mostly making all of his money in TV commercials and not getting a lot of opportunities in films. So I was bringing him opportunities that no one else was, and he was bringing me music that I could never have figured out how to get in any other way. Another great win-win scenario for everybody. So he had this, this idea that he, he would like to feature a woman's voice as an, an instrumental part of the soundtrack where, where you, you would hear this bemoaning, bewitching sound. And he already knew that he wanted Marianne Faithful. So he gives me Chris Maxwell's phone number, or Chris Blackwell's phone number, the uh, owner of Island Records, who has her under exclusive contract. And at the time, he's staying at his place in Jamaica. So I call, I call the phone number I get, and his secretary picks up the phone. I learned on that phone call and from subsequent phone calls that even when Chris is trying to do business with you in the year 1984, he's never going to actually speak to you on the phone. You're going to speak to his assistant, who is then going to say to him, and there's no need to translate the language or anything, he's just not going to touch the phone. She's then going to say everything that you just said to him. You're then going to hear him in the background telling her what he wants her to tell me, and then she's going to tell it to me. At that time, Blockbuster was suing Warners, and Warners was suing Blockbuster, and the case ultimately made its way to the Supreme Court over the fundamental issue of videotapes. Were videotapes like records that could be bought and sold and then a second time and a third time and, and rented? Or, or were they like 35 millimeter prints that were rented to movie theaters, monies were collected as rentals, and then a portion of the rentals by contract were paid back to studios? Clearly, Blockbuster's position was that they were like records. Clearly, Warner Brothers' position was they're like movies. The Supreme Court settled it, and we all know the facts from there. But Chris Blackwell was only willing to take Warner Brothers' position at the time. New World was only taking the position that ultimately prevailed. We couldn't close with Marianne Faithful. So I'm, I'm reporting back to Jonathan. I, I negotiated as much as I could. There's no way that New World will ever agree to give Chris Blackwell a hard piece of the gross, as small as it is in the tiniest fraction that it would be calculated at, because music royalties, if they went the other way, would be a piece of the gross receipts. So I'm reporting the bad news to him. Well, whatever it was that got him the phone number for all of this, wheels went into motion. And Marianne Faithful hears, and the very next phone call I get is from Marianne Faithful. She's living at Dukes at the Tropicana, which at the time had not been relocated. It was still in its original position on Santa Monica Boulevard across the street from Barney's Beanery. And I used to love to hang out at Barney's Beanery and, and, and shoot pool there. It was a challenge table, and I just was a lucky son of a gun. I could, I could put down the quarter to play one game, and I could play all night because if nobody beat you off the table, you got to keep shooting the next game. And that's how lucky I, I was at, at the game of pool. So it was a fun way to have a few beers and, and spend the night if I didn't have anything else to do. So I knew Barney's Beanery quite well. I'd, I'd invested a lot of my time there. So I say to Marianne, well, let's talk about it. Where are you right now? And she's Dukes of the Tropicana. I said, I'm going to shoot over for lunch at, at, at Barney's Beanery. Come on over, let's have lunch. Okay. So she sits down to, to tell me, uh, I really want to do this movie. I'm not doing so well right now. The, the amount of money you propose to Chris is perfectly agreeable to me. I, I, I will do whatever it takes to break the contract with him if need be. I want to do your movie. I want to be in the movie. And, and, and I see that she's, she's not dealing with her food in a very friendly fashion. And she's explained that she hasn't really eaten in a few days. At which point, the half of the hamburger that she did eat was then expurgitated right across the table onto yours truly. She was dealing with a heroin addiction, and she was seriously trying to be over that. And she was doing withdrawal on her own at Dukes at the Tropicana. And that's the point in her life I caught her at. It was a point where she was turning herself around to move forward in a clean way. 
and that's why this would be a good stake and a good little movie credit to get her some momentum to move in the right direction. And that's the day I met Marianne Faithful and, and, and proceeded to a dry cleaner directly after.